Music is a part of the very DNA of Jamaican people. It is infused in almost every aspect of the things we do as a people, as we take almost every opportunity to inject music into our everyday life activities to just make them more enjoyable. Music, however, is a business, a multi-billion dollar one at that. And just as much as the creators appreciate when we enjoy their music, they also want to be compensated for the, very, for the time, energy, and effort spent to create the songs that we all enjoy. In Jamaica, one of the agents is working to ensure our music creators get the due rewards, get their due rewards, is the Jamaica Association of Composers, Authors, and Publishers Limited, JCAP. Here today to help us find the common ground between playing the music we like at parties and events and so on, and making sure the creators get paid, is general manager at JCAP, Miss Lydia Rose. And alongside her, we have a gentleman in the studio who might look a little familiar to some of you. If not, if you, if not, um, that's your homework for today, some of the younger viewers. Just think, uh, he's a record producer, music publisher, Gussie Clark. Think of songs like J.C. Lodge's Telephone Love and Shabba's Mr. Loverman. So like I said, that's your homework tip for today. If you're not so familiar with that, so Google it, brush up on your history, and then come back and you'll have a much better appreciation of what we're doing here today. Now, Ms. Rose, I'm going to start with you. Question number one. For persons who might not be so familiar, what exactly is JCAP and what is its role? Okay. So JCAP, as um, you have stated before, Mr. Davis, our role is, to, in a very short sentence, mm -hmm. to protect the creators of musical works, not only in Jamaica, but through reciprocal agreements throughout the world with other sister societies. Our mandate is to ensure that our members, who are the primary creators, are remunerated or paid when their musical works are used, as you said, in parties, um, on radio, on television, even for a non-profit um, event. Once the, you are not the owner of the music and you use the music, the law states that the music is property. So once you use the property of someone else, you have to remunerate them. So JCAP mandate is to ensure uh, being the middle person that you take out a license and once you take out a license, then we will pay that over as royalties to our members. And when we say take out a license, we mean that it, it would be impossible for if you're using, say, Moses Davis, mm -hmm. being a man's work, in um, all the parishes to try and find being a man. Yeah. Um, right? That course. would be an impossibility. So, therefore, that is really Jacob's role. We represent Moses Davis, and you will take the license from us. Yeah, the middleman. So you just yeah, make sure that are the, people pay the you. The agency, and, and we pay, pay to all right. the members. So, I guess the question is, what does membership to JCAP, because I would imagine you're appealing mm -hmm. to the persons, the creators, the ones who create the music. Mm -hmm. What does membership of JCAP entitle me to? Why should I join as a musical producer? What would be your pitch to me if I make music and I, you know, so on? Okay. All right. So for clarity, we represent the primary creators, the lyricist, mm -hmm. the, the person who writes the music, we call them the composer, and the publishers mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. without them there is no music industry of course, definitely. right if you are an f3 what their benefit from joining jcap is of course to collect money when your work is used as i stated before it would be impossible for you yourself as a music creator to go and look for all the users of your works, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So um, for you to be paid and you would want to be paid so that you can continue making music. So that is the critical and most important benefit to the creator. Another benefit is that they're also linked to all our other members throughout the world where their music can also be collected. Because as I stated before, we not only collect here in Jamaica, but if you are a member and your music is played in Japan, in the USA, in Germany, etc., our sister society collect money on your behalf and send to us for us to pay you. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now, Mr. Clark, before I even go any further, I was going to mm -hmm. ask, what, way in on um, what you're hearing from Mr. Rose in terms of JCAP's role and as a music producer, somebody who's actively involved in the industry, what is your take on the work that they're doing and why would you recommend that other uh, fellow producers, fellow musicians like yourself get on board? Well, firstly, I'm a member of JCAP as a music publisher because mm -hmm. JCAP 
does not represent you know producers or artists or anybody and a lot of people don't understand the distinction that mm. you know you don't you don't join jcap if you're an artist or if you're a producer you have to be a composer or a music publisher or an author now as Mr. Rose said, the fundamental thing is that you need global recognition, protection, registration, and everything to associate your work with you. You can't stay here in Jamaica and monitor what is happening in Nigeria or in Egypt or in Holland. But their structure, which is part of a whole global organization, there's not a GCAP rule or a GCAP way. The collective management associations are all linked together all over the world. Each represent each other in the world. So I'd be glad to be here creating and making music and know that I have a, a local society here that is protecting my rights in territories and regions that I am unaware of. And also to know that I will collect or if I have any issues, I can take up a phone or go down to their office directly and find out what I need to know and can get answers in real time versus joining a society that is located elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to you know, make a phone call and write a letter and an email and wait and thing. Real time service and protection, it gives an advantage. So I guess one of the questions that are, for me, the follow up question is, are we talking about real money here or are we talking about peanuts because i mean people might be of, of the opinion that all right yeah j cap might be for, but it's probably like a little smiles or something like that i mean inevitably every mick will make a muckle <laughs> but at the same time people might think it may be not worth the trouble you know what i mean they might say why the the, the, the benefit might not necessarily weigh um, um be, you know be worth it let me help Respond you on that. that let me help you on that firstly what you said is important every mick will make a muckle if you can be con collecting globally through one entity it's a lot easier than collecting nothing mm. and the critical thing which mr was getting to is the basis of how one way earn jacob can't guarantee how much you're going to earn that is subject to other things which he'll explain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. but i i i wouldn't say it's peanuts mm -hmm. right jacob pays out substantial amount of money to not only to our foreigners but to local persons to date of our 20 years we have paid out over 850 million wow. in in royalty okay. distribution Big so it peanuts. is not <laughs> that's peanuts, not pe that's okay? not peanuts. <laughs> and i will come. further go on to say even if a member gets as you say peanut today mm -hmm. they might be getting a house money tomorrow right because right? protection is crucial and what i will bring in into the argument is <clears throat> a lot of the like u.s artists are well I would say Drake, but he's Canadian, mm -hmm. samples our members' works. So you might not, we have a member who did not earn for 20, 30 years. He has been in the business for 40. Mm -hmm. And one sample from Drake's song, and I can say that it has been so substantial that he is more than going to the bank. Exactly. So protection is what is crucial and not necessarily the fact that it is peanut or not. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, in turn, how does one become a member? What is that process like? Okay. So to become a member, you, you pay a one-time fee. Not every year, not a subscription, a yearly subscription, a one-time fee of 2,500 Jamaican dollars. Mm -hmm. And then you should have commercial, three commercial works to present to us and why we say commercial works meaning that it's on the market because we have to collect to pay you mm -hmm. and we don't want this going to members to say oh i join up to jcap right, and exactly. you're not getting any money which we have had right we want to ensure that your work is out there for us to protect for us for us to pay you so that is that is the criteria all very right, basic now, quickly online our person candice christine mm -hmm. thank you but before i even get to canon ricardo portius is bigging us up online thank you ricardo thank you for your eyes really really appreciate that now candice christine is asking is that figure the amount paid out in jmd or usd i saw something online but i want you to clarify it before i even get there that's jamaican dollars because right. we live in jamaica so right. we paid in jamaican dollars so right. the 850 is jamaican I mean, in researching, I saw something to the effect that based on what you collect from overseas agencies, mm. you you remunerate that to persons in the currency that you yes. receive. Yes, and that money and that part of it is not even in the 850. But so, as I said before, two reciprocals, um, say ASCAP, BMI, PRS, all the other countries, when they pay us, 
we pay our members in the currency that we receive it in. We don't convert. We don't siphon off anything like banks. So if we get $100 for you, we are paying you $100 US. Uh, let me just make you add that. You seem like you might have something. No, no, we're just that laughing that the siphon is no, just kind of funny. You know that exchange rate. It, it is true. It does, yes. it is valid. So you want yes. to send it, it in. Is valid. Yes. People want to know that. They want right. to know that whatever them getting, there's no dilution, there's no exactly. liquid, whatever. You know what I mean? Right. Yes. No. One of the things that, um, especially locally, one of the things that I guess has quoted a little controversy, especially among promoters and that kind of thing, is the knowledge that they have to pay a license to play the music. In addition to, because they're thinking that in addition to all the other fees and things that the money that they have to put up to get their event up and running, they don't have to find Jacob to give them a license, to pay a license fee to play music. Break that down for me. Adjust that, man. All right. So that one is just like to my heart. Because as I said before, it's people property, right. right? And I've said to a lot of promoters, the music is the not, not even the main ingredient. It's the sole ingredient of having a party or having an event. Because without the music, if you go to a party, what you're having? A breakfast? You're having a social. Are you having a, but even with social, exactly. you, 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 you'll you be going on your phone and play the music, right? Right, 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 right? Or you're having a poem recital. Or I don't know what it would be, mm -hmm. right? So the music is the most critical part of any event. So therefore, why is it they have a problem paying for the music. Mm. And they will pay for all the other fees which don't associate with the music. So they'll pay, um, they'll pay millions of dollars to have food there. Millions of dollars to, you know, and, and, and I, I'm, I, I'm not saying that they shouldn't have a good, a nice ambience right, and right, etc. Right. But then when it comes to the music, which they can't have the party without, they come and they say it's expensive, or they come and they say that's why should they pay, and so forth. Without the music, you wouldn't be buying, um, paying for the chicken, or paying for the, the tent, or right, anything. Right, right, right. You wouldn't even be a promoter, right. because you're not a singer. Exactly. You're, you're, you're not producing music, so where would you be? The question I think many of them probably have is like, I hire a DJ, the DJ is supposed to take care of that, the DJ is supposed to come start out all okay. those things, because mm. he's the one who's supposed to be, he's the one technically responsible for the music. So if I bring in this DJ, why I have to have a turn one as a promoter, for example, for argument's sake, just playing devil's advocate, and yes. then pay another fee on top of that, then pay the pro pay the um the DJ to come play music. You know what I mean? I'm just right. from that perspective. Okay, so you're hiring the DJ in his capacity as a professional. Mm -hmm. Just as oh, you would send your, your daughter to primary school, but if you want extra lesson, you're hiring the same teacher, you're mm -hmm. paying her the money, forgot to teach the, the, the person the extra mm -hmm. that they want. You're only employing the DJ in his capacity as a DJ. Mm -hmm. That DJ is not responsible, and this is the law, this is the um, Copyright Act, and it's, a, and it's throughout the world. That DJ is not responsible for paying the writers, or anybody who would have created the music mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. the society who the the um the creators invested the membership to to protect they are the ones who has to pay and remember also you know the dj if you pay him a hundred thousand dollars to play the music act, and so on right yeah. he's not the one who is earning or making a profit mm -hmm. nor is the one who is would be losing if, if, if you don't make a profit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you, you're only hiring the person in his capacity, professional capacity. So he's not responsible. Right. The law say is the promoter, the venue operator, and some person don't realize that the venue operator also has a responsibility of if they allow infringement, they can be sued. Okay. So both men have to, so the promoter and the venue operator have to kind of work that out or is two separate fees talking it's, about? Well, the, some venue, in, like in the U.S., mm -hmm. the fee is incorporated in the venue oh, okay. that you pay. In Jamaica, it is not so. A lot okay. of venue operators is not willing to take the responsibility for the promoters. Okay. So it will be two separate. All right. I, I, have, I would like to add a point, though. Sure. That we need to also look at the, the part of the problem I have with 
I think promoters are willing to pay, but the question that they believe that they should pay what they think they should pay. Okay. And that's a misconception. Okay. They don't okay. tell GAPS how much to charge them for the light bill. They don't tell Water Commission how much to charge them. But they want to tell the creators of music how much that they should be charging for the usage. And there's a misconception again, for example, where someone keeps an event and hires an artist to pay. And the argument is, but why me should I pay a GAP license and I pay the artist? The artist might not necessarily be the writer of the song. Mm. The writer the song with Billy Rhythm could be your little son who is not up front collecting by any other means and measure except when exploitation of his works and he mm -hmm, has to mm -hmm. be paid so everybody have different rules and different fees are set and structured that you can, you can be making more music be profitable to survive and take it as a profession and the industry continues before I even go any further, any other questions what, how, how much exactly is this license fee? Is, is it like a set figure or does it vary? No, it varies because it depends on the event that you're keeping. Mm -hmm. So we have a tariff which is online on our website and the tariff speaks to the different events. It also speaks to the different types of business because as you can um, accept, a restaurant can't be paying the same as a Sunfest. Mm -hmm. A Sunfest also can't be paying the, the same as a fish fry. Okay. Which, yeah, yeah, okay. So Which kind of brings me to our next point because it, it, it's far more expansive than people yes, think. It's not just exactly. the party promoter, the man no, who runs a business, no, maybe no. even, as you say, even a restaurant operator who no, plays music and stuff no, like that. No. To break that down for me, that person knows it, how exactly how detailed it goes. In fact, it is everyone who uses music to enhance their business or to, to have an event. So, once, as I said before, once you are not the original creator, and you are using a person's property, you have to take, a, take out a license. Even the government, who you mm -hmm. have to pay a fee. If KCC is having an event, they have to call us for, an, for a license. Mm -hmm. Although, you have to pay the KCC fee for the same event. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, it, it goes down to, it is all encompassing, and we have different tariffs for the different type of events. A cable company tariff will be different from a radio station, because, as you know, a radio station will be consuming a lot of music. So, their, the, how their tariff is work out will be different. A fish fry, they will pay the minimum. A restaurant that has background, they will not be paying unlike, as I say, at some place mm -hmm. where that will be having a big event. And also, in, ter in terms of the type of events, they have live performance, which is different from recorded performance. So a party will have a recorded performance, while a live concert will have people performing live. Mm -hmm. JCAP can collect for all those type of music. Right, Every which, music that is played. Which one other thing when I was doing the research, I came across something that says even if the music is live, mm -hmm. and there's another, there's a there's a license fee or a requirement into because I'm thinking to myself, for example, if I'm a young and upcoming artist and I, you know, because there I want people to hear my music. Yes. And let's say I go to this, I there's a venue and I decide to come and I'm like, all right, you know what? It's all original music. I'm gonna, for example, I'm just a guy with a guitar and I'm playing mm -hmm. music and singing and stuff like that. And then I said, you know what? It's like a trade-off. I'll just let you, I'll allow you to let me play. If, if, if you understand what yeah. I mean. But I just go and I play and I'm okay with the venue of, mm -hmm. with, with them playing my music and so on because I want people to hear my music and appreciate me and I love what I do. So how then, if I'm okay with the setup and the setting, how is it then that it, do I still need to have a license for that? You know what I mean? If I'm okay with the music being played, because it's a matter of copyright and so on. You're, if you're I'm okay to with the venue, it. To the venue or to the person to who's the person. Person. Like if I'm as a person Both. and I'm playing and I come yeah. to a venue and I'm and like, an typically the, 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 the you, promoter might say, jam, okay. You're jamming. Right, I'm just jamming. And I'm okay with everybody passing through and hearing my music, yeah. hearing my play and appreciating it and so on. Does that still, the issue of a license still arise in a circumstance like that? Okay. The issue, the license, it, a license would still be required mm -hmm. because firstly if you are a member of any society in the world you would have already assigned the protection to that society mm -hmm. unless you write to us and say okay i which the law allows that i have i have done a direct licensing meaning i have taken out a license for myself on my behalf so you don't need to contact this oh, um, okay. venue you are allowed to do that okay, okay? okay. but then it would have to be where you are the sole owner of that work right. because once there are other persons who would have created it with you they would not have given you the right to represent them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you could not do that 
only way you can do a direct licensing unless you are the sole owner of the work. All right. Okay. So in terms of compliance, how is that? Do you find people getting on board with, J with JCAP's message and then finding you and registering and then other promoters and so on, making the payments as you'd like them to? I mean, I'm sure there's always room for improvement, but how do you see it going at this time? All right. In Jamaica, there's a lot of room for improvement. We are a non, we, we are a society that don't like pay taxes, oh. right? And they call us the tax police, the oh music my. tax music police, police. Wow. right? Okay. So you can imagine. So whereas for government, it is like mandatory for JCAP, although the law says mandatory, a lot of enforcement has to be done. So it is, it, it leaves a lot to be desired. However, we have quite a few persons who are very, very, very compliant, okay? And we have to give shout out to them. You have the RJR group, you have promoters like Frenchmen, and you have quite a lot. You Carib have Cinema. Right. Carib Cinema, amusement, yeah. and et cetera. A lot of radio station. And on the flip side, you have where we have to take a lot of persons to court. You would mm. have seen that also in the public domain, right. where cable operators refuse to take out license, okay? and quite a few other radio stations. So we are, we are working. I'm not saying that we are not doing well. Mm -hmm. We are because our mandate is to protect and to ensure our members' works are paid for. But as you said, we have a, we have a good way to go. Now, okay? Mr. Clark, I'm going to bring you, again, bring you in again in terms of the issue of, as a promoter, as, a, as somebody who appreciates the need for as an artist or as a person who creates music and so on, you want persons out there to appreciate your music fundamentally. And and, and some people might say, they might call them the police and so on. It music might be police. a barrier <laughs> to getting your music to the end user, end user who is the listener so they can appreciate and love it. And so on. So how do you see that they can reconcile the relationship? So yes, there's still this level of protection that's needed, but at the same time, you still want the people out there to love and appreciate the music. So if you pass and you see a man play, you hear a man playing your song, you might not necessarily be too vexed because that means that he's actually appreciating your music. A lot of persons is of that view that that's a way to go. But first and foremost, I have to recognize that I'm involved in a business and I have to respect and recognize that those who want to use my works, they are trying to use it to enhance their business and make money. Mm -hmm. So my point is, why not have me make some money in the chain? Mm -hmm. I mean, GCAP can't make any money off of me in a sense because it's a non-profit organization the members own. So they, they are not profitable and can't be. So my thinking is that when I create a music, I involve other creators and writers and people who, as we say in Jamaica, build a rhythm. They want to be paid. Their children want to go to school. They want to eat too. Exactly. So why should not everybody in the chain, you know, be get what is due to them? That is the thinking. I'm I, I'm at the bigger picture. I am not at my benefit, my interest. I am at an industry of which I am a part of right. over 40 years. Yeah, right. And anything good for the industry, good for me. You say you, you, you're far past the whole boy, I need for boss, so I no, write if they might play the no, music. No, sir. Yeah, right. So me, quick, let me take a question online, one from Candice Christian. I appreciate the question, Candice. She's saying, so how is the everyday man or woman, average Joe, <laughs> monitored when they use music to enhance their service that they provide to their patrons or promote their business? How do you, how do you, I mean, okay. is it volunteer or do you have people out there going and trying to pay attention and bring some accountability to the situation? I would wish we were like the Europeans, very volunteer okay. and just do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But we don't do the right thing in Jamaica. But we do have licensing officers who we depend on to go out and to actually go and look for these businesses that are using the music and to have them licensed. So we do have persons on the road walking the pavement, trying to ensure that we protect our members' rights. I mean, I came out, I heard a stat the other day that says Jamaica has some 900 events every month. <sighs> so, I mean, getting those um, monitored and regulated must be a real challenge, right? It's a challenge. It's, it's a morning, it's, a, it's hard work. Morning, noon, night. You, you're driving around, you're taking pictures, you're calling. Sometimes you call promoters and the promoter says, it's not me, I don't know him so. Mm. Right? Well, <laughs> might, might, I add, though, might I add a little bit more meat to the question? Right, sure. Which, which the person asks, how do you, uh, it's not a matter of monitoring. I think a lot of people want to know 
when you collect money, J-Cap, how do we know you pay to the right person? Mm-hmm. Who? Uh, yeah, that is a real question. That's a very good, that's a very yes, good so question. I expected yeah. that to right. come up. Yeah. Also. So radio, yeah. J-Cap monitors oh. radio electronically. Mm-hmm. They know every song we play on the radio every day, any hour of the day, how much time it play. When, when there are events being kept, they, said they send officers to the venue. Them get playlists from the DJs. When live shows are going, them get playlists from everybody. So Set they have a great, so a yeah. great system right. of knowing exactly what is done mm-hmm. and who is to be paid. And my argument, you know, if Jacob cannot collect for Drake in Jamaica, then why them can't collect for me as an artist? Exactly. It means that there's some global international respectability, you know, in, in what they do. And talk, talk to me about that relationship with your overseas partners. Mm-hmm. How close is that relationship? How um, readily do they communicate with you to let, pe- let you know that mm-hmm. people are utilizing our works locally, yep. abroad, and, and so on? Okay. Um, the relationship is symbiotic. <clears throat> because as um, the last time, uh, trying to recall the name, but anyway, their society, um, the gentleman... Even, our, even a member, even a, a national who has joined an overseas society, their society writers to say, okay, this person was on some fest. Mm. When, do, when are we going to get payment? Okay? In the reverse, we will say, okay, Taros Riley performed at Madison Square Garden. When are we expecting payment? So that is a type of relationship that we have where we communicate almost every day, tracking down money, tracking down payment. For ASCAP, we send to them all our members who have performed in the U.S. so they can pay us. And likewise, any of the, whenever, any one of the international members come here, we are totally obligated to ensure that they are paid. And not only for live concert, but for recording music. And I must uh, make a clarification and also advise the public that it's not only JCAP that would collect. We also have a society called JAMS, which is mm. a, they represent producers. Okay, so you are also obligated to pay to take out a license with them, but that is for recorded music. So where I said before, Jacob collect on all form of musical works, live concerts, etc. Jams will be collecting on recorded music only. Right, okay, so, so I, I need to make that distinction because a lot of time people say, "Oh, but I have paid Jams. Mm-hmm. Why do I need to pay Jacob?" Mm-hmm. Jacob is the primary. Soci- the society that represent the primary creators. Jams rec- represent the executive producers. Mm. Okay? So you have to, you can't, it's not one or the other. It is both. Oh, Except we both. represent the primary creators. All right. Okay? So what's your membership like to date? Oh, our, our membership, we, at this point in time, we have, there are other societies in, in the region. Coscap in Barbados, Cot in Trinidad and Echo. And um, Cot is, the, is 28 years old, so they are the oldest society in the region. And as we speak, JCAP actually has the highest membership. We are currently at 4,100 members. All right, and these locally. Are, and these are these range from the most popular to even to some lesser known. The most popular to, and but remember, you know, and which a lot of persons um, also um, don't realize we do not represent the artists. Mm-hmm. So being a man, as being a man, is very popular as our member, but we represent Moses Davis, the writer. Mm-hmm. So we have a lot of writers that people will never know their names, mm-hmm. never come across them, okay? Mm-hmm. But they write some of the biggest songs that are out there, right? So <clears throat> it is not a matter of the artist, it's a matter that we collect for the persons who write the right. music. Right, uh, just to be, right. yeah, just make the distinction, Shana, it's not yes. for Bujo, it's, it's Mark Myrie. It's for Mark Myrie, right. right. he's, he's the member. He's right. the member, correct. Right. All right, so another question. Um, what's the process for using music in radio features? If you break that down, perhaps a person might say if you may use a feed, use a mu- use songs, for example, to create a... a Sync license? Create, for example, if you're creating like a commercial, uh, yeah, commercial or, okay. or something like that. All right, so that's a, that would be re- that's a sync license that would be required. They would have to contact the publisher, when unless why Mr. Clark is also here, mm-hmm. um, who has to give permission for you to use the music to sync it with the um the, the video presentation that you're doing. Okay, so that's so you not still done have to see. No, it comes through us if okay. it is one of our members, but 
at every step of the way, if you are using property, you have to seek permission. Yeah. That's what the law states. You have to ask. The, 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 all of the owners, the creators, they have exclusive right, not non-exclusive, you know, exclusive right to them. So they are the ones who who will say what you are to do with my music. In fact, you have not only economic rights, you have moral rights. And if the person who like what you're doing, they can say, no, I don't want you to do it because morally I am not okay with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's an exclusive right. So they, you, whatever you're doing, you have to seek permission. I mean, all but it's parties yes, concerned. Uh, and it depends on who you go to for the permission. I raise that because I don't, I'm not exactly 100% familiar, but I know there's something called, or it's called fair use or something like that, which allows you to use up to, I'm not, don't quote me on this, I'm not sure, but um, something to the effect that you can use up to 30 seconds of, of, of a production, and it's not, um, if it, especially if it's not for commercial purposes, then it's okay. No. That the, the, the copyright access on um, fair use is something unique to some countries, mm -hmm. not unique to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. The only exception in our laws is if you're using it for educational purpose. And mm -hmm. it depends on what the educational purpose is. And if you're also using it for <coughs> um, government purposes, etc. So our laws speak to a limited type of exemption. Mm -hmm. Right? So fair usage. Mm, let, let me help a bit here. Mm. Why it couldn't really apply make mm -hmm. much sense? Suppose, mm -hmm. for example, somebody wanted to use a song written by a Rasta man in a pork advertisement and they mm -hmm. only want 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Could not be allowed. So yeah. fair usage could not allow that yeah. arbitrary right. yeah. usage. But that would be the, his moral exactly. right. Yes. 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 So yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So fair I know, usage doesn't apply in Germany I know, in that I've, sense. Some people tend to hack or believe that there's a different understanding in Jamaica versus international. It don't work that way. Once you're using anything worse, if that part is unique, could also be only two words in the song. And if the words are so unique to an original work and you want to use it, those two words can actually make so much money that, you know, it, it can't be free. Mm -hmm. I know of persons who have two words in our song and make more money out of that sample usage than they have made in their entire life. So that rule or myth about you can't use X amount for it, no. no. You have to get a license yeah, or That's require. not in, the lo in our yeah. law either. Uh, yeah. I don't recall seeing no. it in our law. It's oh, not wow. in our law. Mm -mm. All right, we're talking here with representatives of Jacob, ladies and gentlemen. They're giving us a real breakdown of how this mu the business part of the music works. I mean, I encourage you to send in questions. If you have any, this is the time we have them available. Take advantage of the opportunity. Now, you mentioned there are some exemptions. Do you have any idea what those, can you tell us what those are in terms of using the music, um, just for a person who might be from what you want to know? All right. So as I stated before, um, one clear exemption is if you are using it for educational purpose, mm -hmm. right? And when we say educational purpose, just in the classroom. So if you are teaching and um, <clears throat> you want to give examples of the music, you can. There is also exemption where the minister um, can say, okay, for certain national events once we use music it can be exempted mm -hmm. okay those are the two main exemptions that i know that is um currently in the law there is also um usage when the work is it's not an exemption but it's where if a work is in public domain mm -hmm. you can always use that work because then it is out of protection and no, when our yes, act was um amended in 2015 copyright was extended for 95 years after the last the death of the last creator mm -hmm. okay oh, the last creator the last <laughs> creator important. okay so if you have five creators in the work it's until the death of the last creator 95 years and beyond okay but once the work is in public domain meaning that that 95 years has gone in different countries international it is 50 years or 70 years so once it is in public domain you can use that work and do whatever you want with it and there is no protection you don't have to take out a license so i guess the fundamental message is if you're gonna use music contact jacob contact understand jacob. what exactly you're allowed to do what kind of license you might need to that get that is correct and then proceed mm -hmm. from there that and is i guess correct. from your regard it's understand it's not <laughs> It's not a punitive thing. It's not something to dig money out your pocket. If you're smart enough to appreciate it, it's something that will put money back in your pocket and, and in the future. And a lot of examples that I've given to persons is that, look at it this way. If you have a son or a daughter who loves music and come up and start creating and people want to use it, 
wouldn't you like to and want and they would like to make this industry a profession wouldn't you like to see them be compensated for what they are doing mm, it's just a matter of respecting that which we have and if the world love it so much and utilizing it then we as a people can do the same to our own definitely. it's just the right thing to do definitely and to add to that we are we are we are no bona fide unesco certified kingston city um, the fact that music is in our, in, our, in our bones and in our beings, I can't see us living without music. So for the creators to continue making this great music that we love, they need to be sustained, just as all the teachers and the police, but they can't go out and pick it, you know, mm. to get what they want. So as uh, Mr. Clark has stated before, whatever remuneration should be, it shouldn't be the person who did not create telling you because some promoters said I want to give a contribution right they don't know how much the studio time was which is very expensive they know how much time effort went into creating that one song that you love to hear that is a hit right now you don't know but then you don't want you want to profit from it, but right. you don't want to pay for it. Okay, that is unacceptable. And which is fair. I mean, I, I mean, as, as much as I'm playing devil, devil's advocate, I can appreciate that if you put the work in, you want to be compensated. You want to be, as much as you want people to appreciate the work. Yes. And as G. Mm -hmm. Man yeah. just said, comply with the law. Mm. Yes. Yes, right. it, is a, it is a legal requ um, requirement. All right, so we're going to move to our to wrap now, but what, mm -hmm. I want you to just share some of your, um, I guess, medium to long-term obje objectives for Jacob in terms of what you're trying to achieve, I guess, going forward in the immediate okay. future in terms, of, in terms of raising awareness and compliance and so on and so forth. Okay, so our, our short-term objective is to become a household name. Mm -hmm. Right, starting from the very young. Not as a, not as a police, though. <laughs> <laughs> even whatever, even whatever it takes right? 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 to protect, <laughs> whatever. So the, the young person coming up can understand because it, I mean it starts with the youth, and if mm -hmm. they understand what intellectual property is and what copyright is, as they grow older, they will be able to appreciate, and even more person will probably and and parents will more appreciate their 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 kids mm -hmm. and 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 the parents can also understand what their children will go through because a lot of parents still think that being a lawyer doctor indian chief is what is there but as music have shown music has come a long way and it has shown that it makes men all and women out of our 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 right. children and, and that said, is how they can earn and earn billion dollar history it i mean is. industry it yes. is yes. it yes. is and and we must also remember, which I want to say, and this is part of JCAP mandate as well, is not only the musician or the artist <clears throat> that is there earning. If you put on a party, if you look at the economics of it, the soup man is making money, the hairdresser is making money because the amount of person goes there, mm -hmm. um, persons buy clothes just for that event. Yes, I see. <laughs> right, I mean, Don't talk about government fees, yeah, right. right? Just on the songs that are there in the industry, it 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 maintains and it feeds a. a I mean, Jamaica as it is, without our music, even to go on tour. Remember to go on tour, persons carry the man who taking up in bag. I mean, Junior Gong have the flag man, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. If that's all he does in his life, he, 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 he's on stage doing the flag and he's music earning. Feed, music and feeding, and, and, so, he, and yeah. it's just feeding him, right? Yeah. So our, our, our short term is to have JCAP become a household name for our citizens to understand what, it's, what is intellectual property, what it is to actually make music and what music is about. And our long term goal is to ensure that we have 100% compliance in Jamaica. Whatever it takes. <laughs> And in addition, we had a serious value to GDP as an industry. Definitely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. 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 Just to m clarify something for me, in terms of making, when you when pers or promoters or whoever mm -hmm. makes this payment, this essentially allows them to play as many songs as they want? As many songs as you want during the night. So, I, and I said, I, I say to the persons, but even for radio stations, mm -hmm. you take out a license, which is a fraction of your growth and you're able to access the content for as many songs as you want why do you want to get into a position where you can be sued okay and is it for example like for example a radio station is it an 
annual license or is it like a monthly a situation yeah. like that? Because I mean, it, yeah. it must vary depending, yeah. for example, if you have a party relative yeah. to having a station, relative right. to so, having like yeah. a, a restaurant right. or something. So we like have that. Two, two types of license. We have transactional license, which as you say, it's a one-off for the parties, etc. And then we have blanket license, which is a yearly license, which as you state, um, radio stations, restaurants, most of the businesses will get a one-year license because we don't know what you'll be playing. And you can um, play anything at any point in time. So the one, the yearly license for businesses, etc., will allow them to play as whatever they want during that entire year, and it's renewable. Transactional license now is a party license where you're take, doing something for one day, one event, and each time you will you will take out another license. All right. Uh, um, we have some questions jumping online. Leo Gilling, thank you, Leo, for tuning in. It seems that you caught our discussion late, but he's asking some questions. But it's worth recapping all the same just for your benefit. It says, are <coughs> artists registering in formal ways with JCAP and why JCAP over Sony, BMI, or any other foreign company? Okay. So, artists. we do not represent artists. We represent the lyricists, right. the songwriters, and the composers. And just to be clear, for example, they don't represent Beedeman, they represent Moses, Moses Davis. Davis. So, I mean, name. there's a distinction there. The, 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 the government name, the government, the, the, the private citizen, that is who JCAP represents. Right. Right. And JCAP, as we said, is your national society you need to um it, it must bring you some joy to build your national society although a lot of person look at it from economics but as mr clark has said before you can walk into jcap at any time you can come in um persons or members have come in and said let us see playlists because we don't know why we're getting pqyz that is what we do or we are very transparent so our books are open unlike if you join a bmi as he has referred mm -hmm. um I don't know if you will know your BMI rep, as though you would know all the persons in the JCAP office. You would have to call them. You would have to send an email. I mean, it is just not an efficient business for you to join an overseas society. Mm -hmm. Might I add something, though? If, if the society at the world's biggest artists join and ask them to represent them is asking we to represent them here. Jamaica, it means yes. that there's confidence exactly. and there's a proper yes. way of which we are doing yes. business that yes. gives us, them that mandate yes. to ask us to represent them. Yes. And in fact, we had a, a, a user, a hotel, who asked us to show that we are actually paying ASCAP and the BMIs when we collect from their members here, and we were able to do that. Mm. So you are up. You, I mean, right? you are running. You are running your show quite, quite effectively. Transparent very effective and, and, right and very transparent. Might All be right. the best in the region, I think, too. All right, wonderful. And I, again, Leo, you're asking a question. We discussed it before, but he's asking, how does the artist get paid from license fees? He seems to have joined the conversation, which is fine. We're glad. Yeah. We're glad no, for that's, that's eyes. Absolutely. Pleasure. That's pleasure. Pleasure. Right. Pleasure. Okay, so um, JCAP is a not-for-profit organization. We are only allowed to take out our administration fee and we are part of our international body CSAC where we are also capped where our admin fee should not go above 30 percent mm -hmm. so because nobody wants to know okay you're collecting but you're 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 having an admin admin fee of 60 percent so 40 percent is only going to the writers no and in fact for the past three years jcap admin fee has been below 30 percent we have about 28 percent we have about 27 percent so we are achieving economies of scale as we grow so <coughs> for your listener that um everything else is paid over to the writers and the composers i'm going to ask you a question you don't have to answer but i'm going to ask the question anyway can you tell us what kind of checks or what kind of amounts you have see, ever seen paid over to an uh, a, you know an individual through jcap so persons can have an idea of we want to, you want you want to know how much millions yeah, want to, yes <laughs> okay. want to. well we have paid a, 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 a like, like for example an individual a popular artist you don't have to call any name yeah. but you know how much have you paid based on their works and so on we have paid upwards of um, five, six, seven million dollars in one go to one member. Look back in the camera and tell them that for me, please. Oh, we have <laughs> paid upwards of nine million, five million, four million to one writer. All right. Right. So, so if you needed peanuts. any other argument to connect with Jacob and make sure that they are defending your rights to your creative productions. I think you just got nine million a while ago. Our giant GA cap now. Exactly. <laughs> you just got nine million a while ago. So I can, I mean, it only sounds logical to me mm. to link up with the agency if I'm an artist. 
or you know as you know in my private capacity or a writer or a composer right. anybody like that yeah. to make sure i have somebody who is out there protecting my interests not just locally but, but globally as well yes. might i had something though if i am correct mr rose can guide me jcap everything about jcap is available on our website you know right. so nice. there's anything they want no, it's all there in right, addition right, right, you know right, right. so there's no nothing not difficult to right. find out and we definitely want to encourage the promoters the restaurateurs the hoteliers all persons who are using their music so it makes sense because we said if we want our industry to be taken seriously and appreciated around the world for the contribution it is making we have to make sure that our creative our creative persons, persons. are getting their fair share so they can they continue to create exactly you play the music to bring people inside mm -hmm. it's only fair that those who made the music can collect what they deserve and, and in addition Correct. though those young and upcoming like mr rose said creators also need to recognize that there's an entity here that can protect and defend their rights and it can be it can be a professional a viable business for them mm -hmm. so don't worry about the standard we are you know up and up with the rest of the world all right i think uh, i think we've covered it all we've had a very long discussion very fruitful one very educational one especially for me myself mm -hmm. i'm really glad that you guys took the time to come here and share this with us i'm going to give you the last word to to wrap there just connect with our audience and just let them know both of you um mm -hmm. you know about jcap and why jcap why jcap is important we've said it before but from you just to let persons know what's going on with jcap and so on okay well jcap we are um, this year is our 20th year, and I can say that throughout the region, JCAP is the Society of Choice. Mm -hmm. um, in Jamaica, we have shown that we can collect, we have shown that we do pay out, and based on our membership, 4,100 strong, which, I mean, a lot of persons would even want such a strong membership, even just the vote, mm -hmm. right? We are an organization to contend with. Um, we are doing our outreach, public outreach program to also advise that we, there is a, we are um, near Almantown. We are corporate citizens. We have adopted a, perhaps a primary school, a basic school in Almantown that mm -hmm. we do re um, public outreach to. Um, in terms of um, what we would want for our members, we do educational program for our members every quarter. We do have public forums for the public, at least twice yearly. So we are ensuring that JCAP become a also a name, a brand to contend with. And in going forward, we want anyone with questions. Our office is open. We operate. Um, I told one person, our uh, open door policy. He asked if our doors were always open. Yes, our doors are open. If you call 24 sevens, I, I, we won't say that we will answer you 24 seven, but we will return your call. Uh -huh. So we want you to know that JCAP as a society is there to protect our members. And we would want the users of music to also pay and comply and look at the, on the music as a business and not just something to benefit from. All right. And I would say those who don't like to pay, don't want to pay. JCAP has never lost a case in court in defending the rights of the Jamaican creators. Don't be the next one. <laughs> All right. There, there you have it. Like I said, if you needed any other argument to connect with JCAP and get familiar with the work that they're doing, you just had them. And if you want to get more information about JCAP, you can visit their website, which is jcapjamaica.com. Give them a call at 876-948-6439. You can send them an email as well at info at jcapjamaica.com. So you can reach out to them. And of course, they're on social media as well. So you can find them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. Yes. Just search for them Follows. and you find them. Yes. And just like that, it's time for us to wrap. Thanks to everyone who tuned into our discussion, especially those of you who sent in questions and comments. We really do appreciate it. And if you have a question and, we, and you'd like to send it in, not to worry, you can send it in all the same. We'll make sure to connect with our friends from JCAP so we can just channel information straight to them so that they can give you the answers that you need. And remember, our audience plays a major part in our show. So if there's anyone in particular you'd like us to have in studio, let us know and we'll try, our, we'll try our best to have that person in studio as soon as possible. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Information Service to see who will be in studio next. We do this every Thursday live on Facebook. I've been your host, Vaughn Davis, and this has been Studio 58A Live. Thank you again for joining us and please have a wonderful day.